Welcome to this tutorial on building a scalable Flask web project. This course is designed to give you a high level overview of how to set up the basic structure for a scalable Flask application. The focus is not on building a specific project or actually scaling the app, but on understanding how to organize and structure your code effectively for growth and maintainability. You will be building a simple example app skeleton. This example is intentionally kept minimal to help you concentrate on the project structure not on functionality or complex code. To make it easier for you to follow along, I'll occasionally copy and paste longer code snippets, which you are encouraged to do as well. All the codes are provided in the associated tutorial for your convenience. Ready to dive in? You will build a simple message board app. While the app itself won't have much functionality, just some internal links and minimal styling, it's the structure that matters the most here. This course is all about providing you with a high level overview of how to set up the basic structure of a scalable Flask app. The app will include basic navigation between a home page and an about page with internal links that demonstrate how routing works in Flask. By the end of this tutorial, you will be equipped with the skills to build the Flask project from the ground up. You will walk through every step from project setup to running your first Flask application. You will be writing Python code and seeing the results immediately. You will learn to structure your Flask project for scalability. As your project grows, you will need a solid foundation. You will cover the best practices for organizing your code, including transforming it into a package and using the application factory pattern. This will make your project easier to maintain and expand in the future. You will understand the flow of requests and responses. You will delve into how Flask handles incoming user requests and how requests are routed. You will learn how to manage your application using helpful tools and techniques that streamline the development process. This will make building and expanding your Flask applications much easier and more efficient. Finally, you will learn how to improve the user experience and UI. You will look at styling with CSS, structuring your project for static files, and using templates to create a visually appealing and user-friendly interface. Now, let's go ahead and create your first Flask application. In this lesson, you will learn about the prerequisites needed to follow along with this tutorial and build your Flask application. This course uses Flask 3.1.0, which requires Python 3.9 or newer. If you are using an older version, visit the official Python website to download and install the latest release. Having a good code editor is crucial for writing and debugging your code effectively. I recommend Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, as both offer excellent features for Python development, including syntax highlighting, code completion, and debugging tools. However, feel free to use any editor that you are comfortable with. Once you've confirmed these prerequisites are in place, you will be ready to move on and create your Flask project. Now let's go ahead and set up the environment for your Flask project. Before you start writing any Flask code, you should set up a development environment. This step is crucial for organizing your project and managing its dependencies. So why do you need to use virtual environments? With virtual environments, you can control the versions of packages used for your project and manage all the required Python dependencies for your project in one place. Virtual environments help to prevent conflicts between projects that might want different versions of the same tools. In short, they provide a dedicated space for each project's dependencies, making sure that the project dependencies don't clash or interfere with each other. This also helps to keep your system clean and organized. Now let's go ahead and create and activate your first virtual environment. Open Visual Studio Code or any other IDE that you are using and let's create a new project folder. Now open the project folder that you have just created inside your IDE. You will create the virtual environment for your project inside the project folder. Open terminal and navigate to your project directory. If you open terminal from within VS Code, it will already be navigated to your project directory. To create a new virtual environment, enter the command python-mvenv and then write any name that you want to give to your virtual environment name. I'll just write venv. Execute the command by hitting enter or the return key. 
as the output of this command, a new folder called venv will be created in the root directory of your project. Once the virtual environment is created, you need to activate it so that you can install the required dependencies in the virtual environment. First, let's see how you can activate it on Windows and then I'll show you how you can activate it on Mac or Linux based systems. In Windows, type the name of your virtual environment, backward slash, then scripts, make sure the S is capital, then backward slash again, and then type activate. This will activate the virtual environment for you as denoted by the virtual environment name in front of your directory. If you are on Mac or Linux, the command to activate the virtual environment is source, your virtual environment name, forward slash, bin, forward slash, and then activate. After the virtual environment is activated, let's install Flask. To install Flask, enter the command python-m pip install Flask. Now, the Flask installation has started. Congrats, you've successfully installed Flask in the virtual environment, which will only be available to your project. In a similar way, you can later on install any Python package required for your project. With your environment setup, let's create the actual Flask project. First, import the Flask class. This line imports the necessary class to create your Flask application. Then, you need to create a Flask app instance. This creates an object named app that represents your web application. The name variable with double underscores before and after it is also called dunder name. Dunder is the short for double underscores. Dunder name is a special variable that holds the name of the current module. It is crucial to determine the root path of the application. This allows Flask to locate static files, templates, and other resources. Finally, you need to define a route for your home page. The app.route decorator tells Flask to call the index function when the user visits the root URL. The index function simply returns the string hello world. And this will be the content displayed on the home page. Now let's do this in our IDE. Create a new file and call it main.py. Here, we have imported the Flask class, initialized the Flask object, and created a route for our root URL. Now that you have created a simple Flask application, let's run it. Open your terminal within the project's root directory and make sure you activate the virtual environment if it's not already activated. Now enter the command python-m flask run. This command starts the Flask development server and prints a message in the terminal telling you the address where your app is running. Open this address in your web browser and you should see the hello world message being displayed. This confirms that our basic Flask application is working correctly.